Now, recently on the channel, we've been discussing ways to increase your workflow and throughput in Sublime Text, which all centers around not having to take your hands off of the keyboard and place it onto a mouse in order to navigate to a menu or carry out some form of action. And we can do that by creating custom key bindings to functionality that exists in Sublime, either taking commands from menus and adding them to keys or customizing existing key bindings to work more the way we would like them to work. And we've also discussed several simple plugins not a lot of code in these plugins that just modify existing behaviors in Sublime Text to make your throughput just that much higher and allow you to get your work done quicker. In today's video, we're going to marry those two topics together because I'm going to show you a simple plugin which allows you to take an action with a keyboard that normally you could only take with a mouse. <music> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome to another November video on increasing your workflow in Sublime Text with simple plugins. Before we get to that though, remember that your continued support is what makes continued production of these videos possible. So if you're getting any value out of the videos, please do use those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate. Please remember to also make use of the comment section below the video for any questions, comments, requests for clarification, even suggestions for other topics you'd like me to cover in a future video. Now it is still November and we've been doing a little video series here on ways you can enhance your workflow in Sublime Text with very simple plugins. Because when it comes right down to it, Sublime is extremely customizable. It doesn't have every feature in the world out of the box. That's part of what makes it so powerful. It's small, light, and mean, and allows you to add the features that you need. And the example that we're going to be using today is a way to enhance the Find in Files feature of Sublime Text, which we can get by going to the Find menu and choosing this Find in Files item at the bottom, which opens the Find in Files panel. Now, we're not going to talk about how the Find in Files panel actually works in this video, so if you're unfamiliar with this and the power of it and the things you can do with it, then leave a comment down in the comment section below the video, and we can work on a video to help get you up to speed with how to make the most of this panel in Sublime Text. The one thing we will say, though, is that this button right here uh, and how it's visualized will depend on this, the theme that you have. I'm using the adaptive theme that ships with Sublime here. If you're using a custom theme, this button may look different, but it'll be in the same position. And uh, what this button does is toggle whether or not the Find in Files results appears in a panel at the bottom of the screen, which is what you get when that button is turned off. Or if it's turned on, as it is right now for me, then the Find in Files results ends up in a tab in the window. And for the purposes of this, what we're doing would work either way, but we're trying to show that you could use the keyboard and not have to reach for the mouse so much. And so it's easier to work with the find in files results if they're actually a tab in the top of the window. And so we could use this, you know, if we wanted to find all of the places where certain terms appear in our files, right? And I have an example term here, so I can just hit the key to do the search and we can see that it searched 33 files for that in a case sensitive manner and it has found some results. Now what we see here in the results is the names of all of the files where this was found, that's always in column one, and then indented there are the matches and lines. Now lines that have a colon after them are the actual lines where there are matches, and basically on the way that I have my Sublime set up right now, we can also see the matches being highlighted with those boxes. The other lines that surround that, those are the context lines that tell you uh, sort of more information about where that that line actually is in the file. And if we wanted to actually go to one of these things, what we would have to do is bring our mouse in and double click anywhere on one of those lines with the colon, the actual match line, and the file will open up and we can see what we're doing there. And then we could use the keyboard to come back, but if we wanted to go to the next match down in the file, like say this one, then we'd have to double click again to go to that place, and then we'd come back here. And that works, but it requires us to take our hands off of the keyboard and put them on the mouse to be able to do things. And when you're in a flow, when you're working, if you could just you know, switch back and forth, as we saw, it's very easy to switch between tabs using the keyboard shortcuts, then not being able to navigate into those items uh, using the keyboard is a little bit of a slowdown, but we can fix that.
Now we could create a plugin to do what we want to do here. We saw last week that there's an open file command that's built into Sublime that will open a file for you. And what we did say in that video is that if you append a colon and a number, a line number, on the end of the file name, then Sublime will open that file and position it on that very line. You can also add an extra colon and a column number if you want to get the cursor to an exact position. That's how error message navigation works, for example. So for our plugin here, if we wanted to write one, we know how to open the file and we can look at the results in this buffer and know that any line that starts with a number and is indented and the number ends with a colon, that's an actual match. In that case, the number is the line. And from that position, we could scan back upwards through the file to find the file name, which is going to be the first line above this that's starting at column one. And then we could get the, the uh, file name from there, add the line number, use the open file command, and the file will open. And you could do that. That's actually not super complicated, but it is more complicated than it needs to be because Sublime already knows how to navigate to these files. It does it by way of a double click with your mouse. And if you remember to the video that we did a little ways back on how to find the commands that you want to bind to keys, we showed that you can go into the console and use sublime.log commands true to turn on command logging. And then any action you take with a key binding or a menu, the command is logged. And if you if you've ever tried that, you'll know that anytime you interact with something with the mouse, a command appears in the console output. So we know that interacting with the mouse is actually using a command. So we can actually take advantage of that and sort of piggyback on Sublime's inherent ability to be able to handle that. And that example can be seen here in this plugin right here. Now, this is a plugin by Keith Hall. He's another uh, person of the stealthy and hasty uh, Sublime Text uh, organization where these plugins have been coming from. He wrote this particular plugin. And uh, as with all of these videos, there's a link down in the description where you can find this plugin so you don't have to transcribe this. And I would doubly recommend looking there because as we can see here, I've trimmed away some comments that were in this uh, command just to make it all fit into one zoomed in screen here as much as I could so that we wouldn't have to be scrolling around. So there is more documentation documentation comment in here. But all this is really doing is using the Sublime API to determine based on the cursor position or multiple cursor positions in the case of there being more than one selector, sorry, more than one selection rather, uh, to determine where in the window the mouse would be if it was right on top of that. That's an API uh, method that is available to us for the inverse of the reason where you might want to click with something in the mouse and to know where it was in the file, you can figure out from the file where the mouse would be. It's sort of a back and forth type arrangement. And once you have that event information, then we can just simply simulate running the drag select command. And we tell it that where the first mouse button was pressed and it was pressed twice so that it knows that it was a double click and we give it the location to where that uh, double click would theoretically have happened. And just like that, executing this double click at caret command essentially is the keyboard equivalent of double clicking the mouse wherever the cursor is. You could use this pretty much anywhere if you wanted to double click on something and take an action, but you didn't want to reach for your mouse, you could use this. Now, in our example here, we're doing that in the find in files results. Now, for personally, for my own sake, I set up a key binding for that, as we can see here on the enter key, because that seemed to make the most sense to me, follow along, press enter. It's sort of like how you would follow a link if you were in a browser or something like that. So. Because the enter key is most definitely used for a variety of other things, we don't want to block our ability to type the enter key, uh, I have added a context onto this particular key binding to make sure that it only applies in files of uh, sorry, uh, files of type text find in files, which is the syntax that's applied to the find in files results. That's how it's getting the syntax highlighting to show you the line numbers and the file names in a slightly different manner. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how you might figure out the scope and how scopes work, there's a video on the channel for that, that I would highly recommend you watch. It's a pretty long video, but it's packed full of information and it'll tell you what this selector actually means and the key binding and menu item you could use to actually find it. Uh, that's not just some black magic that I just happened to pull out of thin air. And if you're unfamiliar with how contexts work, there's also a video on that as well.
But now here we are back in the actual file, and with this key binding in place, I can move the cursor onto any of the locations, when as long as the cursor is inside a place where double-clicking would actually navigate there, I can just push Enter, and that file just automatically opens and pops to that exact location. And I can again use the keyboard to come back over to here and come down to the next one and search that one and come down, and I can even pick one from the actual header file itself to see where this is even coming from, and still always come back to the find results or jump to any other file all without touching the mouse, which really enhances your workflow, keeps things moving. So we can see we're really sort of uncovering a little bit of a trend here. We're seeing that we can get potentially very large gains in our Sublime Text workflow and throughput with just very minimal, small, simple changes. The plugins that we're have used in these last few videos are very short. They're not very complicated at all, and yet they have very massive gains. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how the plugin system in Sublime Text works and what's possible with the API, then you may be saying, yeah, these plugins are short, but I couldn't write anything like that. And nothing could be further from the truth. It's not as hard as you think it is. Python is a very simple language to wrap your head around. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the ins and outs of Python and of the plugin system in Sublime Text, and how to create your own plugins and packages. And you're going to want to hit that subscribe button down below the video because starting sometime in the new year, very early near the start of the new year, we're going to be start covering more topics like that on the channel, starting from the basics and ramping up to more sophisticated topics so that you understand more how these plugins are made. And then you can really make Sublime Text your own. But not to worry, we're not going to stop creating tutorial videos uh, such as these ones and ones we've done before. Those videos are still coming coming. So do feel free if you're finding any value whatsoever out of any of the videos to use those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate. And please remember, you can always leave questions, comments, suggestions for other topics down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd. Until the next video, this is OdatNerd asking you to please have a sublime day.